the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome, friends, as we come together to listen and celebrate and reflect on God's Word on this second Sunday of Easter. Whenever we are confronted by God's Word, we realize that we are in need of God's mercy, God's compassion, God's forgiveness. And so let's begin our time by bringing to the Lord those parts of our lives that we know need healing. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, where you intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. We make our prayer through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The friends held steadfastly to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of the bread, and to the prayers. And fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. And all who believed were together, and had all things in common, and they sold their possessions and goods, and distributed them to all, as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they partook of food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord added to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Give, Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. Give, Give praise to the Lord, for He is good. His mercy endures forever. I was thrust down, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He was my Savior. There are shouts of joy and salvation in the tents of the just. Give, Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done, a marvel in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in it and be glad. Give praise to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable undefiled and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are guarded through faith for a salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, 
though now for a little while, you may have to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, which, through per though perishable, is tested by fire, may redound to praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with unutterable and exalted joy. As the outcome of your faith, you obtain the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You believed, Thomas, because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. And Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and place my finger in the marks of the nails, and place my hand in his side, I will not believe. Eight days later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. The doors were shut, but Jesus came and stood among them, and he said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put your hand and place it on my side. Do not be faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to them, You have believed because you have seen me. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When we are feeling good, when we are happy, we allow people to get close to us. We are open and we are able to receive. But often when we are hurt or wounded, we tend to alienate ourselves. We don't want our wounds to be touched. We do not, even at times, want to be seen by others. I want to suggest today that this gospel text is not about just Thomas's unbelief, but most especially an account of healing. You know, friends, all of us bear wounds. They can be physical or emotional. They can be psychological. They can be spiritual. All of us are wounded in one way or another. 
after the death of Jesus, Thomas isolates himself. Notice the other disciples gather together, and yet Thomas decides to isolate himself as he deals with his grief and his loss and his pain. You see, all of us have got different styles of dealing with hurt in our lives. Some people withdraw. Others, perhaps, do something else. All of us have a way of doing things, especially when we are wounded. And because Thomas goes off and isolates himself, he misses the first appearance of Jesus. And he cannot believe his friends when they say they have seen Jesus. We hear that quite clearly in the gospel. It's strange if you look at the paradox in that gospel. Jesus is actually the one who is pierced. But Thomas and the disciples are those who are wounded, are those who are hurt and struggling. For all of us, life hurts and we struggle. What's important is the way we choose to deal with the wounds that life inflicts on us. Because there is one of two things that can happen. We, like Thomas, can alienate ourselves. We can go and be further, further alone. And at times when we do that, that slowly turns into a bitterness. Or the wounds of our lives can propel us to go and to seek wellness or wholeness when we become aware of them. And we almost see this as well in the gospel if we think about the account that we hear in these days. Those disciples go off and they gather in a room. And maybe they talk to one another about their, their pain, their woundedness. Maybe they spend time sharing what they remember about Jesus. And, and talking about him brings a certain amount of healing. Thomas decides to alienate himself and goes off alone. But another one of those disciples, who we know was there, we are told in the gospel these days, Judas goes off and he ends his own life. He is alienated, he is alone, he is embittered. The other disciples, and even Thomas to a degree, seem to be seeking some sort of wellness and wholeness. And so it seems to me that the scriptures today teach us three things about being wounded. First of all, notice how Jesus confronts the pain and the woundedness. He doesn't hide it, but he goes to his disciples and he shows them his woundedness. He shares them his wounds with the disciples. And we struggle to do that because that is against our social convention. We live in a world where to maybe admit that I'm hurt or that I'm wounded is to admit some sort of weakness. And so we so often live with a facade. It's against our social convention to share our woundedness with others. Now, I'm not suggesting that you go out and you tell everybody on the street about your hurts or your pains. But all of us have to have a space and a place where we can deal with the woundedness of our lives, where we are willing to share it with somebody else. Two people may have the same pain. One person may know how to deal with it, how to confront their pain. Another may not be able to do that. But two people may also have the same pain and they don't know about it. And yet when they start to talk about it, when they confront it, 
suddenly something begins to happen. And that's what Jesus invites us to. Not to run away from our pain, but rather to be willing to deal with our woundedness, to share it with somebody else that can help us on the journey, as he tries to do with his disciples. The second thing I want you to notice is that woundedness is multidimensional. We tend to forget this about our pain and the pain of others. For example, a relationship can break down and we are hurt. But notice too that there are other things that happen. It's not just about the breaking down of the relationship, but maybe the questions and the aftermath of that which we need to deal with. Jesus confronts Thomas's pain, but notice it's not just about confronting that pain. It's multidimensional. Because he not only confronts Thomas's pain, he also confronts his unbelief, and he brings Thomas back into the community that he has isolated himself from. He helps Thomas to be healed from his grief, his struggle to believe, but also his isolation. And so too with us. We need to know that pain is multidimensional and there are many layers to our woundedness. And Jesus, I think, invites us today to see all the dimensions of woundedness, those things perhaps that lurk under the surface that we are not always aware of. We act in a certain way because we are hurt, but there are other things too that are happening, and we need to be aware of that. And the third and final lesson, I think, is that Jesus becomes the wounded healer. He uses his wounds to heal. You see, our wounds are healed when we are with another who understands our pain, and they can empathize with us. Because we have been wounded as well. And so Jesus uses his own woundedness to heal somebody else's wounds. By sharing our own wounds, we also can create spaces for others to be healed. Jesus the wounded healer shows how wounds can be transformed into a powerful witness if we are willing to share them, if we are willing to become for one another wounded healers. I wonder, friends, what the resurrection really means for you. Does it mean that you are able to find some sort of freedom from your woundedness? Does the resurrection of Jesus and living that resurrection inspire you to learn to become, for another, a wounded healer? And so, Lord, we bring these and all our prayers to you, knowing that you hear them and answer them as you know best, through Christ Jesus, your Son, and our risen Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together now in the words that the Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we ask you now to help us to remain 
with you always, to be close to you with all the ardor of our hearts, to take up joyfully the mission you entrust to us, and that is to continue your presence and spread the good news of your resurrection. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's go now in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.